Welcome to the Job Search Podcast with your host, John Rivero, where we will be interviewing leading industry experts to help you get the job that you want. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Canadian Job Search Podcast. My name is John Rivero, your host, and I'm so happy and delighted that we have a newcomer success story that we're going to be sharing with all of you. But before we get into that, I just want to remind you all that we do have a free resume template that's available for download at the Canadian Job Search Academy dot com website forward slash resume template. I'll make sure that I include that in the show notes so you can download it yourself so you can prepare yourself for when you're ready to make that move and transition. And our special guest today is Nihar and Nihar has he's a he's a new Canadian. He just joined us this year in 2020, January of 2020 to be specific. And I'm so happy and delighted to be sharing his story with all of you. And he's going to be taking us through part of his job search journey uh, in Canada and sharing, a, you know, highlighting, you know, some of the challenges that he faced, but also highlighting some of the opportunities that he had in uh, in the same breath. So, Nihar, welcome to the podcast. I'm so happy to have you here. Thanks, John. So, Nihar, so just kind of going and before we get into the story about what worked and what not, what didn't work for you, what was uh, what brought you to Canada in the first place? It's one question I know that's always on my mind and, you know, for some of our listeners as well. Uh, what's the thing that brought you to Canada? Yeah, right. So uh, I was looking at Canada as an opportunity for my field. So I'm in the field of HVAC. And uh, so Canada has both seasons, winter and summer. So it had the opportunity of working for both cooling and heating side of the HVAC which I never had when I was in India. So that was one of the reason. And also the work culture over here, I heard that uh, I, it was really good. So I wanted to experience that as well. So that is the reason why I shift to Canada. Nice. Well, you definitely, uh, you know, we do definitely have two seasons. I feel like it's like that all year, winter, summer. I don't think there's actually a spring or a fall in there anywhere. Um, but yeah, no, that's interesting that... Um, uh, you know that you've done that so, I, and actually out of curiosity what was your first winter like in Canada <laughs> so I uh, came in Jan January so it was not that harsh I heard that uh, mostly in the December uh, the winter is peak so let's see I will be experiencing it this year then <laughs> yeah and hopefully you know we, we this has been one of our nicest summers on record so it's going to be interesting to see what the winter looks like for sure Definitely. so as you were going through your job search, and I know as we were preparing for this call, uh, what would be, what would you say were some of your challenges when you, actually, how long did it take you to find work, you know, when you arrived? And then what were some of the challenges that you faced as you were going through your job search? Yeah, so uh, I arrived in the month of Jan and I got my job uh, in the month of March. So it's around, it took me around three months to land in a job. And if you ask me the challenges, uh, the major challenges was the cultural difference. So, uh, uh, Connell's, ex, uh, Connell's lessons helped me in understanding the Canadian work culture, how the companies or organization over look uh, towards their employ employees and what they expect from their employees. And really, that is the biggest challenge for me. And uh, yeah, Connell's. Uh, lessons helped me in understanding that and help me helping me to prepare for the interview and all the process of job search. Okay. So when you say work culture, so what was different specifically? Like, was there, was it like in the interview process that you noticed that it was different? Um, what actually stood out for you in terms of what was different compared to, I, I, you know, people don't know this, but your background is from India. What was different between India and Canadian work culture? Uh, it's it's starting from the resume, though. So the Canadian resume is completely different what we had in India, uh, which also helped me through uh, the ex through the lessons uh, that I learned from Connell. And mm -hmm. uh, apart from that, the interview process was also completely different. Here, it was more of a behavioral and characteral interviews at the start. To filter you out and after that there was a technical interview which is uh, a rare case in india where they where it's more focused on the technical stuff than the behavioral stuff in india so yeah right from the resume to until the interview it's completely different 
so behavioral so behavioral so I, i'm guessing in india there's i guess there's not as much focus on behavioral as there is on technical right right yeah so and so how did you how did you prepare for that how did you prepare like in terms of being able to go in and and respond differently how did you prepare for these behavioral interviews so uh i had the interview session from cornell uh i gone through that completely and prepared myself for the questions that he has uh, listed in that particular lessons uh mm-hmm. that helped me really to get prepared beforehand uh before the behavioral type interview questions and really i prepared my answers and the way he had suggested i did exactly the same and that really helped me to clear those behavioral interviews and then technical stuff uh, technical interviews was really based on the technical knowledge so i was mm. lucky enough to clear that even as well nice and and just for for those that are listening to the call so the field of work that you went into i know it's similar to what you were doing but it's it's different in types in terms of the type of work that you were doing um is it is it a regulated field you know do you need to have certain certifications to do the type of work that you're doing today in the uh yeah so my background was hvac design engineer which is a regulated field in canada but currently i'm working as a hvac sales engineer which is not a regulated uh so engineer is a regulated field but uh, uh what i'm doing is not require a license because i'm not stamping the drawing so mm-hmm. but the engineer field is engineering field is a regulated field in canada yes okay Yeah and 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 that's good right cuz I I know one of the things that we hear quite a bit from some of the people that we've talked to is um you know it's hard to get into their field of work but you were able to do that even though it's not exactly the same as what you were doing back home um it's still it's still within the realm of of uh the work that you're doing cuz I know a lot of newcomers when they arrive they end up doing something completely different outside of their field just to get a survival right like a survival job sorry so what was so as you were going through your, you know you, you did 12 weeks so in terms of timing around how much time you spent looking for work what was that like if you could just share that with the audience that would be great so yeah i started my job search in canada uh, last year uh, since the month of september or october and i used to spend uh, around 6 to 8 we 6 to 8 hours per week uh before i landed here and once i landed here in canada i started uh, looking into it throughout the uh, complete day so i used to spend whole day uh, looking for opportunities finding the jobs uh, i used to go a couple of times uh, every day through the cornell's lessons to mm-hmm. uh, revise the techniques that he has given to get successful job land in successful job so yeah i would say uh, it's better to be prepared since uh, back in your country before coming here uh, that will give you an added advantage uh, to know the canadian work culture and how the job interview process is and that will definitely help you once you get the opportunity you can yeah. uh, succeed in that yeah no and i actually and actually i know when we were talking before this call was you talked about when you arrived actually do you want to share that when you arrived a day later you had somebody reach out to you if you could just share that with everybody that would be great yeah sure so uh, the day the next day i arrived in canada i got the message from the recruiter saying they had the opportunity for one of their client and uh, it was in the field of hvac but uh, it was not what i used to do in india so uh, i told them that uh, this is not the this is not my expertise i don't have any experience i don't have any canadian experience uh, but i was fortunate enough that they were looking for uh, the the candidate who had who have a strong technical knowledge in field of hvac and fortunately i was able to go into the next stages of the process and finally i landed job in the same company with the same recruiter nice so actually if you could just share that with us so how long did that take so from the time you got the official contact from the recruiter how long did it take you for the actual job piece like was it 
you know, because one of the things that I know that's also different here is the time that it takes, right? Like it, it's not something that happens instantaneously. Uh, it, it takes time. So from the time you had that initial conversation with the recruiter to the time that you got the job, how long was it, how long did it take with the organization to get that role? Yeah, definitely. That's another uh, different thing from India uh, is the time timeline over here. So I got the message on, uh, I got the message. Then after a week or so, I got my first interview. Then a couple of weeks later, I got the second interview. Then uh, again, the third interview. And finally, I got the final interview call where I meet uh, the organization uh, I went to the organization and did the technical interview. So overall, it took around uh, three months to actually get uh, actually get an offer letter and start my job. So yeah, I would say three months. Oh, okay. So yeah, I, and I, I just want to make sure that's clear for everybody listening. And I'm just going to replay it back to make sure that I heard it well. I, I heard it as well. So it, it took the entire recruiting process took three months, right? So from your initial contact to the actual interviews. It sounds like, did you go through four rounds of interviews for this role? Yeah, 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 yeah. four <laughs> rounds in total. Yeah. Wow, and actually I've been hearing that that's becoming more and more common with a lot of organizations where there's a couple of different rounds of interviewewing because you, you're meeting with different people in different levels of the organization as well. So Definitely. yeah, so wow. So you, four rounds of interviews, it took, that itself took time that it took for you to get the role. Um, right. But what was, you know, and, and the one thing I want to highlight to those that are listening, you know, the one thing that you did in the hire that really made you stand out is you did a lot of this preparation work before you actually got here. Because, you know, so what would have, you know, not that, you know, we can speculate, but what do you think it would have looked like if you weren't prepared for when you got here? Do you think it would have taken you longer to, to get a role? Right. So if uh, I wouldn't have prepared, so first thing I wouldn't have received the message from the recruiter <laughs> because I thought, because I think the LinkedIn profile I created using the Connell's lessons as well. So I think that also should have stand out for the recruiter looking at my profile and understanding what is my experience. So I would say I wouldn't have received the message if I wouldn't have prepared uh, before coming here. Yeah. Okay. And, and that's good. And, and this is, I know, one of the things that both Connell and I, we talk about is, you know, if you're doing that work in advance and you have that time, because I can only imagine too, right? Like making that transition from, from, from India to Canada, that that was like pretty stressful as well, right? Like for you, as you were going through that? Yeah, definitely. So uh, living the job that you have in hand in India and coming here with no job opportunities, uh, it seems uh, it it is a really tough and stressful uh, situation, but I would like to uh, I would like to suggest one thing for uh, every job seeker in here or uh, who is listening to this podcast is uh, you have to stay focused uh, in your job search and really stay positive. So uh, definitely, one thing that helped me is uh, staying positive at every time of the uh, every every process of the job searching. And even though I, I got the interview, I was uh, not very excited because anything can happen and uh, you have to stay positive throughout the process. So that will really help you. Okay. So was there anything specific that you did to stay positive as you were going through, going through this experience? <laughs> so uh, I'm a meditator meditation guy so i do meditation every morning to stay calm focused and positive throughout the day so yeah i did follow that throughout my job search and i'm still doing that as well excellent no i'm a big fan i know it's it's one of the things i i, I think i put it on another podcast as well we actually i had the good fortune of um interviewing a mindfulness meditative meditation coach a while back um and definitely oh. That helps, yeah, for sure. And actually, um, and I'll actually include that link as well because meditation is, is, I know it's one of those things that seems so overrated because everybody's kind of talking about it today. But, you know, right. if it helps you stay calm and, and stay focused, and, and I guess as you were going through your job search, you had to stay focused, right? Like I'm sure things right. came up, um, you know, that might have deterred you from wanting to do this because, you know, from what I'm hearing from you, you never had 
that moment of, you know, maybe I shouldn't do this. You just kind of stayed focused on what you were trying to do to, to get to the role that you got today, right? Right, yeah. So, and that's fantastic. So were there anything else, you know, in terms of your job search that stood out for you outside of, you know, the longer recruiting process, uh, understanding Canadian work culture? Was there anything else that stood out for you as you were going through your job search? Uh, one thing I liked about the interviews as they were not stressful at all. So mm. uh, the the conversation were, conversation was really friendly when even though it was interview, and there was not uh, any hard and fast uh, any hard and fast stress coming from the interviewee. So uh, I really liked that. So in in those scenario, you would also perform really well. So uh, I really liked that part of the interview process as well. Yeah. And so did you find as you were having conversations with people, like did any, like, I, I, you know, as you were going through your four levels of interviews, did it change from level one to level four or were they pretty much consistent? Uh, so those were pretty much the consistent, only the stream of uh, stream of the questions was different. So, Mm -hmm. It was first was related to behavioral, then related to um, knowledge in particular field. Then there are multiple fields associated with uh, this particular job. So knowledge in particular couple of fields. And then finally, the technical knowledge. Okay. Yeah. And so that's great. So, you know, and the one thing I'm hearing, and, I, you know, this is the one thing I hear as well, like, um, regardless of the level that you're dealing with, everybody kind of treats, you know, like you said, everybody kind of treats you the same way in terms of yeah. how they approach you. It's not, it's not hierarchical like it is in some other countries. So, you know, you could be talking with, I don't know if you felt this, but you could be talking with the HR person, you could be talking with the direct manager, or you could be talking with the, the person above them and it's still the same type of conversation, right? Yeah, yeah totally agree. So as we as we start to get near the end of this this podcast, so Nahar, is there anything else that you would suggest or recommend for people as they're going through their own job search while they're still back at home before they even get to Canada? Because you, you know, and actually, and I want to highlight that you got this job at the start of this pandemic that we were going through, right? So you know, in early March, uh, the pandemic was just starting to take off, and I believe you said the day after you got hired that the shutdown was coming into effect. So right. what what other what other uh, what other recommendations would you give to other newcomers that are going through this experience today? Yeah, definitely preparing from the home country is uh, I think the most crucial step of landing a good job in Canada once you arrive. So uh, really, I would like to suggest everyone to get yourself accommodated with uh, the Canadian work culture and. Um, uh, understanding the job interviewing process, how the resume, Canadian resume works, and really going through the Connell's lessons once or twice before coming to the Canada, it definitely puts you ahead of a lot of those who are trying to get job here. Uh, I'm, and I'm sure uh, everyone will definitely succeed in their job search. Whoever is listening, my best wishes to them. And uh, I you have the LinkedIn profile link for of mine that you can share with them so that they can contact me and I can help them as well. Yeah, excellent. And, and thank you for, for offering that in the hair. I, I appreciate it. I know some other people as they're going through this, you know, they're probably asking, you know, what can I do? Or, you know, are you a real person? Right. <laughs> <laughs> the other the other thing I get is, you know, are, are you actually interviewing? Are you, you know, when you do your podcast calls, are you doing it with like real people? And yes, Nahar is a, a real person that's gone through the process. And, and here he is, you know, we're, we're talking about this later in the year, but, you know, what he experienced early in the year, even throughout the pandemic still, you know, gave him the opportunity to be able to work for an organization here, which I'm really happy about. So one of the things I, I will definitely do is include a link to the show notes to your LinkedIn profile. So if people want to reach out to you, um, I know you're going to be traveling over the next couple of weeks, but, uh, you know, people can always get after, you know, connect with you afterwards and you can share a little bit more of your experience there. So I, I totally appreciate that. And I'm, I'm very grateful that you're going to be doing that too with this audience. 
So is there, as we, as we wrap up, is there any one final thought that you'd like to leave with the audience, you know, as they're, as they're preparing for their job search or is there anything that you'd recommend in order for them to stay motivated and positive as they're going through this experience? Yeah. So I just want to say, stay focused, stay positive and uh, just keep dreaming. You will definitely land in your dream job. Excellent. Well, thank you, Nahara. I appreciate your time today. And thank you for, for sharing your experience with us and with the audience members. I know this is going to bring a lot of value back to them uh, in terms of their own job search. And uh, I'm very happy that uh, you were, I was able to steal some time away from, uh, from your day-to-day to have you do this interview. Um, and with that, I'm going to say thanks for you know listening into the Canadian Job Search Podcast, where we interview and uh, look at actual live success stories and, and find those success stories just for you guys to let you know that there is hope and there is positivity as you're going through your job search experience here in Canada. Yep. Thank you, Nahar, and uh, all the best for the future. And uh, to everybody else, thanks. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks, John.